Pentatonic scales are fun. I get it. You get to play in a set position or a box. The pattern is easy to remember, and every note sounds good because there are no passing tones. It's the cornerstone of a majority of lead guitar playing and rock music. As cool and fun as that stuff is, you can get bored of always using those same licks over and over and over again. So today I'm going to set you free and give you a new place to play and three licks that you can use all the time and change your life. Be free, beautiful butterfly. So let's say you're playing an E minor on your typical rock song like I did in that short bit a moment ago. You have an E minor chord here, or way up here, the octave of it, and that's where your pentatonic minor scale is. Now, there's another E minor chord you can play with the type two chord form. This is the type one, this bar chord here. The type two is the one that you start on the E string, so you have your E minor here. That spot on the neck is where you can also play, not really a pentatonic, but the scale shape that I'm going to show you today. It opens up a whole new section of the guitar and a whole new world, and it looks like this. Notice in the G string, I only had two notes instead of three, and sometimes if I want to shred and I need the extra note, I'll throw in the passing tone here. You'll see that in lick number three in a moment. And this works for any minor, by the way. I just happened to grab E here, but that box is going to work anywhere else. If I'm saying B minor, I also have a B minor chord here, and I have that same thing. So just like the pentatonic, it always works in the same spot. Now one more note before I start with these three licks that we're going to use in this new position, the first, second, and third string final notes have full bends, just like the pentatonic scale, so it's easy to get used to. So on the third string here, you have whole string bend. On the second string, and on the first string. Just like if you were playing a regular pentatonic there, but we're in this new position, it's easy to remember that way. This first lick now is very similar to something you might do in a regular pentatonic scale, where you're just doing pull-offs on a couple of strings. but we're taking it into this new position where it has a different, I think, cooler sound. And well, let's play the lick against some background music and then we'll come back and talk. Okay, here we have a looping pattern where we're playing on the B string. We have uh, this key of E minor, we have eight to seven on the B string and then nine to seven on the G string and we're doing it four times each. And those are 16th notes. And then we're just playing the same idea again, but instead of the eight, it's a 10. So it's an E to an F sharp, or an A to an F sharp, excuse me. And then we finish it off by going up eight notes and then down eight notes. So we start with the root note, the E on the A string, and it's seven nine, seven nine, seven nine, seven eight. And then we go to the eighth fret on the E string and do pull offs on our way back. Eight seven, eight seven, nine seven, nine seven. And then to the root note, E here. Now, this is the kind of lick you can get a ton of mileage out of in this position or any just with these double pull offs. got a nice rhythmic kind of looping quality to it, which is nice over background changes. Let's look at lick number two now. We move on to a cool cross picking lick here, which again has a nice rhythmic quality to it and has a nice staccato kind of feel and really sounds impressive when you nail it to the time. We'll use the same backing track, which by the way is available to download for all my wonderful patrons at the link below. I'll make an extended version of it for you guys so you can jam over the whole thing. So for this one, we're starting on the octave E on the G string. We hit it with an upstroke, and then we kind of roll to the B, the ninth fret, on the D string, and it's one note here and then three notes on the next string. So we're always getting the pick going in the right direction. And then we're going to seven. Then we're gonna skip a string, go to the G, the eighth fret of the B string, 
and then the seventh. So all together. And we're gonna stick with that same logic, but when we go up to the B string, we're gonna go up one note each time. So now instead of eight, seven, it'll be 10, seven. Then the next time, it's gonna be the next note up, which would be here, but we're not gonna go out of position, so we're gonna grab it from the first string and skip a couple strings now, and it'll be the seventh fret and the 10th fret. And then we're just finishing it up with the same kind of rhythmic pattern, but playing it on one string each time. So it's the seventh to the ninth as a hammer, and on the next string, the G string, the seventh to the ninth hammer, and then pluck two notes. And then we're gonna go seven, eight, shift up, play that eight again, to the 10, and then back to the root. For this last one, the lick is only the last measure when I do the big climactic buildup, so I'll play a little melody and then go to it. Okay, remember before I said about throwing that extra note in on the G string? Here it is in this lick. So here we're playing that whole scale and doing it in such a way that our picking hand is always going in the right direction. So I start with the three notes, E on the seventh fret, F sharp nine, 10 on the G. My hand's going in the right direction then. The next one's an upstroke on the seventh fret of the D string, downstroke nine, upstroke 10. So I'm gonna repeat that seven, nine, 10 again so that I can reset my hand to the next string. Now when I get to this string, I wanna have three notes, so I'm throwing in that passing tone, seven, eight, nine. Again, picking it again to reset the hand. And now it's seven, eight, 10. Again, seven, eight, 10. And then we're gonna get to the last string, seven, eight, 10. And then I'm gonna bend up to the resolve the E. So that trick there where I'm starting with three and then doing two sets of three on each string after that is something I use as a way to play a uh, lead up crescendo type of things and always keep my picking hand going in the right direction. It works with your three note per string, major scales and modes, as well as with what we're doing here. In any case, I hope you get a lot of mileage out of this kind of secondary minor position and that these licks give you a launching point to create your own. If you have any questions or comments, ideas of your own, please put them in the comments below. I get back to everyone as soon as I can. And until next time, guys, keep making great music. Hey friends, don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications. It makes the whole world better.